This is very, very special. I think the excitement, there's the expectation, and just the, the beauty of this uh, chapel that is so visible in a very new part of the city that's filled with expectations and hope and so many young people working and living here. It's just an extraordinary moment in the life of the church. So my role uh, as a chaplain is in many ways to be like the day-to-day -day, uh, presence here at the shrine, but we'll be also relying so much on the priest to assist us because we're going to be offering mass twice a day, Monday through Friday. There'll be two masses on Sunday and then two hours of confession every day from Monday through Friday. So we need a lot of assistance from our brother priests as we seek to be a, a strong presence of the merciful love of Jesus Christ right in the heart of the seaport. We've already got 27 weddings booked and we're, we're just opening today. Uh, I think for, for one of the struggles in the church is that not everyone chooses to be married in the church and you know it's really important for us to have Catholics married in the church and we're right in the middle of all the major hotels here in Boston so we're hoping this will be a, an opportunity for people to say you know maybe I should get married in a church it is important. When I was a young priest and would prepare couples for marriage I would always tell them that their dinner table was the altar in their family where they gathered for their family meal. The altar in the church is the other table in our lives where we gather with our extended family and with Christ, the head of our family, there to discover our identity as his disciples. This chapel, this cenacle exists so that crowds of strangers can become a community, a family, where we gather around the altar that we are about to dedicate. The altar is the table where the extended family with Christ gathers. It's also the place where Christ makes a gift of himself to us. The blessing of a chapel and the, the blessing of an altar uh, are very, very important to liturgy where this altar that will be uh, used for the celebration of the Eucharist every day is dedicated to, uh, to God's service and uh, it is anointed with the a chrism that was just uh, blessed during Holy Week at the cathedral with all of the priests there. The blessing of the oils is always a great sign of unity because those same oils will be used in all of our churches for baptisms, confirmations, anointing of the sick, uh, ordinations, and also for consecrations of altars. So there is a unifying aspect uh, to the uh, symbolism of the oil. We've, we've been here for over 50 years, but the neighborhood has changed drastically since the, the fishermen and the longshoremen built the original chapel. Uh, there's still a fishing industry here, there's still longshoremen working here. Uh, Boston's an active seaport. We have preserved uh, that uh, nautical uh, motif, and of course the very patroness is Our Lady of Good Voyage, and the wonderful ships that uh, remind people of the history of this port of Boston. We're a pilgrim church, you know, Jesus calling of Peter and Andrew, James and John, these were fishermen, right? And, and his call to them, you know, to put out into the deep for a catch. When he says, Jesus says to Simon Peter, from now on you'll be a fisher of men. Certainly there's, there's beautiful analogies there drawn right from, our, from the apostles, right? the fishermen of Galilee. In addition to that, being a people of pilgrimage, right, making our way to the, the home of heaven, right, making our way to the shores, the safe shores of eternal salvation, the church is in many ways seen as a ship. The main body of the church is called a nave, which means ship. And when you look up at the beautiful ceilings, right, it, it, it embodies the hull of a ship, reminding us that we are on pilgrimage, right, we're on a, we're on a journey. And, you know, we get seasick every once in a while, right? And, and that seasickness is, in many ways, it's, it represents sin, right? And so we come into the church to find the remedies for our seasickness, which are the sacraments the gospel of Jesus, right? A community of believers, right? And, and we are nourished and we are strengthened. We are made well again to then be sent forth to go and love and serve the Lord and one another and bring forth that good news. Even though there's a lot of things going on and you know we've closed some churches here in the city and in South Boston, we're not dead. In fact, no, it's quite the opposite. And God's got a wonderful plan. And this shrine, in many ways, just communicates that, you know, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, like, we are disciples in mission. We're not going anywhere. We're here to stay. And Jesus says, you know, the gates of hell will not prevail against this church, right? Those were his words. And this just shows that, you know what? Mass attendance has gone down, but where church is alive, Jesus Christ is alive in his life of his church, and the archdiocese is here in the Seaport District to carry forth that mission.